What does an elite level engineer look like? Actually, how about this? What does someone look like while they're engineering? Is this something you can capture on film and present a compelling story behind? If you're an engineer, this is what you need to watch. Look, I know there are a lot of lists out there that every engineer or scientist should see, and they will have great visuals or concepts, but what we're talking about here in this episode are shows that portray a good engineer, and not just good engineering. There's plenty of shows with cops, lawyers, doctors, you name it, but where are the engineers? This is the Engineering IRL Podcast, a place for engineers in the real world. We try to break down engineering concepts and figure out how to apply them to real life. Let's become better problem solvers, better engineers. This is your host, Andrew Sario. Let's begin. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Engineering IRL Podcast for engineeringinreallife.com. I'm your host, Andrew Sario, and this is Revision 40 of the show. Because the last few episodes were pretty heavy on the engineering, I decided to get you hyped up about the engineer part of that equation. As engineers, we know we work on some pretty amazing stuff, and the situations, workplaces, risks, and personalities should be enough to drum up some drama, right? With a rich backstory, real-world application, cutting-edge technology, a blend of brilliant minds, awkward personalities, and business and innovative types, why can't we find much engineering content in the form of movies and television? That's what I want to answer for you today. Let me break down a couple of issues with a couple of examples for you. Um, what storytellers can work on and what you can do to help. Yes, you. And then give you your homework. So what to watch. I'll, I'll give you a bunch of shows. If you think you're an avid engineer, I'm going to challenge you to see if you've covered all of these. So what are the issues? Uh, most non-engineering types look at engineering as boring or math or sciency. And that being the case, there is a fair amount of great documentaries out there. For example, uh, Engineering and Empire. It covers like the Byzantines, the Aztecs, Persians, Roman empires, and it kind of covers all the uh, engineering achievements at that time. And it kind of shows like how the technology supported the uh, and the empires. I really enjoyed that one. Uh, it's a good place to start. But for this episode, I'm building documentaries as their own category. So we're not going to cover that here because there's heaps. Um, we're good for that kind of content. You know, we have a lot of engineering document, lecture style, detailed technical stuff out there. So that's one issue. Because it's engineering, there's an expectation to educate. And that um, that turns out in a bunch of documentaries, which is great. Obviously, I, I enjoy them as well, but not exactly the creative storytelling part that we're looking for. The next issue is engineers themselves might nitpick at every small inaccuracy and not even consider the rest of a show palpable, right? Like you you find one little thing and you're like, oh, I can't watch the whole thing. So you might argue that it's the movie director's fault and the producers, not the engineers, because, you know, they can't explain the concepts correctly or they stretch the truth so far that it becomes unrealistic. But that drives us back to the first issue. One of the bigger issues, I think, in uh, engineering is... Because engineering itself takes place at the cutting edge of technology, this means it's hidden behind patents, copyrights, trade secrets that can have like reputational impacts on companies or you know competitive advantages. So it means engineers typically struggle to share stories. You know, there's like an NDA or there's some secret thing that you can't share. And also you're worried about your hireability. All in all, these aren't huge roadblocks, but things that add up to where it is, I'd say. Um, so it's something that you can do to help. Demand help to increase the demand. And you do that by watching engineering content, movies and TV series, and being open about the storytelling behind it, and just be okay with the technical details not being perfect. Cool, so these are the categories I'll take you through. We got uh, Netflix specials, YouTube engineers, space themed movies as a group. There's a bunch of them that I really like. I'll just kind of bundle them together. Uh, dramas based on real engineers, then dramas with engineers and engineering in it. A couple of comedies, uh, animated bits, and um, of course, the superhero category. Okay, so the Netflix specials. Um, abstract, The Art of Design. That one was a pretty good one. I thought it gave a nice little look. Uh, depending on which episode you go for, it'll show you you can find which one's relevant to your type of engineering. Uh, Dream Big, Engineering Our World. I think that was pretty educational. It's on the documentary side, I know, but worth a mention. The Most Unknown. I thought that was also interesting. It kind of opens your mind up and it's something that you can maybe watch with the family. And of course, uh, Inside Bill's Brain. I really like this one. Obviously, Bill Gates is a pretty famous engineer. I don't know if you've heard of him, but it kind of shows a lot of the work he's doing outside of Microsoft. 
and you kind of see why you know it's not about oh I, I worked only in this field therefore I only know about these topics it's about he's got that capability to understand things in such a way and using the same problem solving he can apply it to other things and what he's doing elsewhere is pretty awesome he doesn't just think about solving the problem he's solving the business of the problem and the scale onto YouTube so <laughs> these guys are worth mentioning all right if you don't watch uh, if you're looking for engineering content, support these guys because as these guys improve and increase, obviously that tells the market like we said. So the first is Adam Savage, One Day Builds. He has a few series, but that's the current one that he's going with. He builds a lot of cool stuff and you should know him from Mythbusters. Then there's Mark Rober. He does a few videos a year. He did the Glitter Bomb, but uh, he makes really good videos. Smarter every day. Um, he goes into a lot of cool engineering places and you get a bit more of the technical detail. Uh, there's another guy, the Practical Engineer. Uh, I enjoy his stuff and I've chatted with him a few times and he's he's built his own little uh, like shed, uh, like lab area where, where he kind of built it for the show and builds a lot of cool random stuff. And then of course you've got the Hacksmith. He's probably he's probably one of my favorites to be honest. The type of stuff he builds is the type of stuff that I want to be building. Um, and they're really cool projects. Usually he goes for like, hey, something from uh, Marvel or or a movie or something, some big blockbuster and goes, can I make this actual thing, right? So he made like um, Captain America shields and you know, the spidey eyes actually opening and closing and things like that. So yeah, he does a lot of cool stuff that I would hope to be doing one day on, on, on our channel, Engineering IRL channel. There's We do have a YouTube channel, sorry to plug. This doesn't deserve to go on the list yet, but hopefully one day. Next, we've got space theme. So if you're looking for space themed movies, of course, there's a lot out there, but I'll list probably my favorites um, or recommends at least. So Apollo 13, it's a classic and uh, enjoyed by a lot of scientists and, and engineers. For a TV series, you have The Expanse. It's, it's, uh, it's a future where part of humanity has colonized Mars, right? And then you've already got Martians and Earthlings and, you know, there's a kind of a conflict, like a, like a war tension about to happen. Interstellar, I did really like Interstellar. They have a couple of the best uh, computer uh, computer generated graphics of black holes, which was like actually mathematically proven. And I thought they captured part of the power of time, right? How we underestimate the value of time. Like they really captured that. That was really good. Some people didn't like the ending, but hey, we like we said, the technical details for the drama, the story was really well done. Uh, that's much and much. You have The Martian, that's a little bit more practical. Um, and there's a lot of good engineering and science behind it. I think a lot of engineers will appreciate that and thinking like, how could I survive in on, on Mars with the limited resources? Yeah, First Man, of course, Mr. Neil Armstrong. So I thought that was pretty good. And then finally, Hidden Figures. I think that one's really good. Um, they, they did it well and it's kind of based on true events. Obviously, there's still the drama to it but you can see some of the stuff behind the scenes and what it was like and the accuracy is pretty well done and the drama is really well done too. So it's like a nice balance out of all of them. Right now, if you haven't seen most of them, I would be saying go watch Hidden Figures. I think you can watch that with the family and stuff too and it's pretty good. Cool, so drama's based on real engineers. So there's a new one out called Current Wars, by, uh, which is featuring Thomas Edison. It's got Benedict Cumberbatch as the main actor and I'm pretty sure Tom Holland is a young Nikola Tesla uh, I haven't watched it yet right I've got that queued up I'll be watching that this week um, then you have a theory of everything um, which is based on Stephen Hawking you have the social network with Mark Zuckerberg obviously there was been a lot about that that's a little bit more recent at least and obviously it was quite dramatized but again it's just a sneak peek it's a look in um, and of course he's a big name engineer so why not and then I really enjoyed Imitation Game, um, which is basically the code breaker, the guy that broke Enigma and helped win the war. Uh, I thought that was a real, really cool story. Obviously, there's questions on the accuracy of it, but the fact that we have it, it's it's really well portrayed, and uh, the acting's done well. And it's a lot of it's a story in history that happened like pretty close to now that you didn't realize, but it kind of shows the the technology and the communications part of the war game and how important it is okay so drama based on real events chernobyl obviously that has got a lot of critical acclaim like it's 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 really good and it's a really famous event 
And of course, if you look at Chernobyl, like it's a power station, like there's a lot of, it's a nuclear power station at that. So there's a lot of engineering uh, that goes into those things. Obviously, there's big control systems and control rooms. And then you've got all the chemical engineering, you've got mechanical engineering, there's electrical engineering, of course. Um, so this whole range of it. So it's really good. Moving on to some more like drama dramas, okay? These, obviously, they're not going to be exactly like engineering drama. I, I'm hoping for one, okay? I'm hoping for one one day. But at least let's look at these uh, engineers in it. So the first one is Mr. Robot. If you haven't seen it yet, basically, he's, he's a hacktivist by night, but he's a cybersecurity engineer by day, right? So he protects the company, but as well, he's getting recruited, swindled by this uh, hacker group really cool i think um the accuracy is pretty good i know a lot of there's a lot of hacker comparisons like of the accuracy of what it looks the visuals aren't great uh in terms of they show like these big like you are getting hacked here kind of screens for the viewers but you can live with that because he's describing actual processes that do happen and they're they're pretty accurate um next is pacific rim okay that's a bit on the uh, fantasy side of course but it is cool to see giant mechas portrayed in such a way that's useful to humans um of course there's been some talks about that because of the, the scale of these robots aren't really possible with the current materials we know about but you never know next is a personal favorite of mine a drama that you should watch if you haven't yet and you're an engineer then that is one of your top priority homeworks is prison break at least watch season one and two i enjoyed the whole thing the main character is uh, michael schofield and the long story short is he's trying to break out of a prison but it turns out he designed the whole thing right so he was this structural engineer that was behind it so he knows all the tricks of the trade and even in episode one you can see some problem solving techniques that are like they're really good they're really good and i mentioned them in the book like that's that's how uh i guess accurate his problem solving skills are he's a bit of a genius obviously there's a huge drama behind it and it's not exactly going to show you the engineering process but he's referred to plenty of times as a structural engineer like it's your no you know he's a he's a, he's a really smart engineer couple of comedies okay so the first is the big bang theory i know there's a mix of uh, engineers that like the show and engineers that don't obviously some people don't like that slapstick comedy or that you know with the with the laughing tracks in the background but you have a look at it it's actually pretty good and um howard wallowitz is the engineer in the show and he gets belittled by a lot of the scientists and things like that but you get that even with other genius engineers the ones that have personality flaws but are super smart you know it's the same thing it's the same condescension and it's the same thing where it's like he's working on really smart stuff and you break it down and it's a shelf right so really funny stuff um and elon musk actually appears in the show and that's a it's a pretty cool scene uh, i really like that one next is silicon valley so if you haven't watched this comedy i think it's pretty good it's really around startup culture obviously obviously there's a bunch of guys that are creating software you know they end up making some compression software and then you know all the businessy side of it and the startup side and then you got the tech people developing things and you know incubators and stuff but it's actually really funny um i found it's not as like haha everyone will understand this funny um as the big bang theory but it's it's right up there i think um definitely go watch that one next we're moving on to animated stuff so obviously uh a uh, popular one right now is Rick and Morty. I know he's a scientist, okay, I know. But look, most most of the stuff he does is he needs to he's he's also a genius engineer, to be honest, because he can build all the things that you can think of building. And it's obviously from a practical sense for his uh for his needs. And obviously this is a comedy and all that stuff, but essentially he he he's an engineer, let's be honest. And if you think of it like going, oh, but he's really a science guy. You look at, um, you know, Bill Nye, the science guy. Yeah, pretty famous science dude. He's an engineer. He started engineering. And, you know, uh, he was on a podcast with Neil deGrasse Tyson. He was asking him, why why don't you go by, like, uh, engineer? Because we have a lot of si- famous scientists. He said, look, engineers are based in science still. So it's not like we're, uh, you know, disconnected from it. Obviously, the solutions and where we come from is different, right? We're, we're more in the practical application for human problems, societal problems. And that's why you get the distinction um, from NASA about going to Mars is not a science problem, it's an engineering problem. So there's no laws of physics that say we can't go there, and there's a couple of things to attend to, but if we do the right engineering, we can get there. Uh, the next one is a personal favorite, another personal favorite. So obviously I spent a bit of time on Prison Break because that was a personal favorite. Um, 
I did like Hidden Figures in Interstellar. I mentioned the Hacksmith. So this one here is an anime. You may not be into anime, but if you were to ever watch one, this is the one. It's called Dr. Stone. And uh, again, another science guy, but he builds everything like an engineer, I'm telling you. And the premise of this one is like, um, basically, there was a there was an event that petrified all of humanity. Everything freezes. Um, and then like 5,000 years later, he wakes up. He gets out of the petrification and he, he basically has got a whole world to figure out what the hell happened. And then he builds all the base materials and things he needs to, to live and build a society. He's going back through science. Um, long story short is other people start kind of coming out of this. And one of them believes that he hated the world the way it was before and just wants to start a new world and doesn't want any of the science stuff. So that's where the conflict comes in. But they actually do a really good job of like breaking down the processes to get to things. So it's like, say if he wanted to build a cell phone, then there's like, you know, the eight step plan to get there. Or or he does soap, for example, like soap. He's like, I need to get these materials and these things. And then he maps it out nicely. I think it's a really good way to show it. And it kind of lowers the barrier to entry to understand some of this stuff. Really good one. Um, now that we're in the animated theme, a big shout out to uh, Big Hero 6, which is obviously for kids. It's a superhero themed kind of animated show, but... Oh, it's really good. If you have kids, get them into it. But if you, even if you haven't, just watch it. It's like, it's like um, Wally or uh, or um, Despicable Me. You know, there's inventors in there and stuff. Put up the demand for this stuff. Watch it. I, I personally like Big Hero Six as a full, full blown adult. Well, you can say full blown or whatever, but as an adult. Um, and now that we're on the uh, superhero theme, I'm just gonna do three special mentions. Obviously, I could spend a long time on these, um, but oh, it's one of the ones that are. Forget the accuracy and all that stuff. They're pushing the engineer as the main protagonist, right? As a superhero, which is cool. So the first one I will mention is Black Panther. He get, it, this show gets a special mention, not because Black Panther's an engineer, but because of the work of Shuri and what she does with the suit and all the labs and all the technology she's built from having one base material that's enabled her to do anything. And, you know, if you know anything about engineers, they find the material with certain properties and they push it to the max to build crazy technology as far as it can go. Um, so special shout out for that. The next is Batman, particularly Dark Knight, the way they showed it. You know, he the suit, you know, the, it's flexibility versus protection. You know, here's something that's more flexible, more agile, but you lose protection. Like, that's real. That's the type of uh, trade-offs you normally get when you have to engineer something. As opposed to feeling like, you know, you get, you get something for nothing. Just put the word technology behind it and some new material. Um, that's why that gets a special shout out. And of course, Batman literally has no powers. He has a couple of gadgets and, and things. Um, so there's some really cool engineering behind what enables him to be who he is. And finally, last but not least, our good friend, Iron Man. If you're an engineer and you have not watched this, you need to watch this. This is a major blockbuster film with <laughs> an engineer as the main protagonist. Obviously everything's exaggerated and all that stuff, but it is brilliantly done. And funnily enough, the way Tony Stark was portrayed by Robert Downey Jr., he met um, Elon Musk and there's a little bit of that bravado and that style of presenting, you know, his next big technology and all of that stuff embedded into him. And, and he appears in a cameo in uh, number two. So definitely you need to watch it even if you don't like superhero movies, right? This is back to the argument. All of these ones, pick up, watch it. Now, I will say that basically I've watched all of these um, and a couple of more than the others, but it's it's a good collection and I'm trying to add more, okay? I'm trying to add more. We'll see. Okay, there you have it. A lot of homework for you to watch. If you think you have something to add to the list, let me know. I'll make an official page on the Engineering IRL website on it and I'll basically make a way that people can contribute and say, hey, I know this new YouTuber, add him, it's under this category. I've got this documentary. I know, I know a lot of listeners out there are like, I've got this show you haven't watched. Let me know, we'll add it in. And what I want to do is, you know, that's just part of our help or, you know, on, on my side for building the demand for core characters with backgrounds in engineering. We can build that demand, guys. Um, don't forget people and creatives working on engineering content for YouTube and podcasts like myself. If you want to support engineering IRL, it's a great start by the fact that you're listening to this show. But make sure you share it on social and tag me when you do. I, I'm, I'm watching. Um, the YouTube channel is coming along, but I'm focusing on the podcast, as you see, and the website, of course, and uh, finally, the book. 
Speaking of, make sure you sign up to engineeringinreallife.com forward slash book to be an OG supporter of 10 plus 1 steps to problem solving. Remember, if you've been watching the show and then that book goes off and all that stuff, it's nice to know that you already registered and you lock in that, that, that uh, prestige. Um, so that book, 10 plus 1 steps to problem solving, is one I'm writing about solving problems in engineering. It's got a lot of the themes of the show, you know, like engineering philosophy and thinking and some cool stories from my career. That That's what backs it up. It's like the time. So one of the times I include was when I was about to get kicked off site for allegedly attempting to hack a critical, critical infrastructure site with a printer. Yeah, that happened. Anyways, just go become a member of the site and lock in your access. Engineeringinreallife.com forward slash book. I'll have the uh, link in the description below. Um, anyway, see you there.